face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. As of this time, we're gonna cover two Pokemon I really want to cover for quite some time. They represent what I would say. Much like Regigas and Slacking, a really, really complete Pokemon with massive issues. And quite frankly, these really are making these Pokemon really, really interesting to kind of cover around with. And it should also be stated that, uh, just out of a series alone, to be honest, I covered Garchomp and Flygon like roughly over a year ago. And I never knew this year was go this far and so long, so actually coming around one year later and cover these two. Uh, so really happy to actually be doing this and uh, yeah, it's really cool to have you guys follow me and actually watch this episode if anything and just really heartfelt moment here as I really like our job myself. Here in Black is probably one of the most interesting aspects of uh, Generation 5 however. It is a Pokemon that it's by stats it's close to broken but doesn't necessarily work and that's something that is just fairly interesting. We're going to of course cover that and why it, work or doesn't work, Mega Garchom kind of follow the same path as a Pokemon that introduces a Mega Evolution to a Pokemon that is pretty much complete and close to broken already, and they kind of messed it up, and they mess it up in such a way that it's not a preferable use, however it is used, but they both kind of represent slower Pokemon that is incredibly hard hitting, definitely defined as the purest of Wall Breaker, so with that said, we're going to, of course, cover the Orbs Arcing themes and find out which one of these two are better. We're going to take the one that's introduced first, which is, by default, actually Kieran Black in Generation 5. Now, Kieran Black is an interesting Pokemon in many ways, mainly because of its type combination of Dragon and Ice. What this means is that Ice type, as already stated, is a Pokemon that doesn't necessarily... Uh, covers Pokemon's weaknesses all that well, it has a lot of weaknesses in bond with it. However, it is resisting of ice, which means that the dragon typing lose its weakness of ice, which is fairly alright. And of course, dragon type kind of helps an ice type, but of course, losing the weakness to lights of fire. However, we have a lot of weaknesses, unfortunately, in bond with ice, so it doesn't result with the dragon typing. But we resist electric, grass, and water, standard dragon stuff, really, but are weak to dragon, fairy, fighting, rock, and steel. And of course, these are all very, very, very common things to be hit by. However, Kyurem is fairly bulky, which means that its weaknesses, while cruel, isn't necessarily nerfing it or making it bad in any way. And this is a lot to do with Kyurem's actually combined bulk. It's very high for Pokemon of its caliber. It has 125 in its HP, 100 in defense, and 90 in its special defense. So it definitely chew a few hits. So it definitely isn't all bad, and of course to get it with an offensive stats of 117 attack, which is tremendously high if anything, and 120 in special attack, which is very, very usable, and consider what this Pokemon is forced to do, it's good it has a usable special attack if anything. 95 in speed, while definitely a below average, is still a very high speed stat, definitely ensure that you're faster than most defensive Pokemon, and of course even some offensive Pokemon due to 95 being well, Run of the middle when it comes to what type of role you want to settle with. And since Kyurem Black represents a very, very good wall breaker and its defensive odds already are fairly high, you usually don't have to go for the defensive stance because mainly you are already defensive enough to shoot a hit and, of course, Italia, which means that you can focus more on your offensive stats and speed, which is something that's fairly rare trade actually for this type of Pokemon. Terra Vault, great ability, it works like Mold Breaker, which means that no ability such as Levitate, for example, will hinder you from nerve power, or of course, any Lightning Rod will not stop the Fusion Ball for landing. So overall, very good ability, and if this type of Pokemon and a Wall Breaker means that no defensive responses or attacks can actually stop Cure and Black from doing or dishing out the damage that it can provide. But as you guys know, a Pokemon is only as good as if Moopool allows it to be, so how good is Cure and Black offensively? It's very good. It's, it's of course very good. Being based on a literary Pokemon means that we open up Pandora's box of moves overall. So first and foremost we have Asian Power, Ice Beam Blizzard, Outrage, Scary Face, which is worth mentioning for one reason. Remember, it's a defensive Pokemon. It can capitalize on that and that's actually fairly alright. Glaciate, which works much like Icy Wind really. Dragon Pulse, Free Shock, which is your only offensive 
uh, ice base move or ice stab, which is a sadly a move that you need to use with a power herb, or at least you have to wait another turn, much like shell bash, to be able to dish out the damage. However, this could be used with C and Mine and become the strongest ice move in the game. But yeah, since it is a resting move or a move that you really have to wait before dishing out the damage, it is very risky, which is why the main reason is that you go for Ice Beam Listed, which is why it's good that it has a very usable special attack. Once I've Roost, this is really great, consider that it is, like stated, a wall breaker and will recover. Mm, yeah, come scared already. Focus Blast, Psychic, Shadow Ball, Stone Edge, Shadow Claw, Fly, which, same reason here, works due to the C in mind of being able to dish out damage towards the final type that could force it out. Flash Cannon, Dragon Tail, Single Beam, Iron Head, Earth Power, which is one of the best moves really, Ice Wind, Senebot, Dragon Pulse, Hyper Voice, and Outrage. So, yeah, overall, it definitely does have the coverage. Fusion Bolt is such a big deal for this Pokemon. Uh, it's one of the best moves it can get, actually. And um, I don't know why I didn't include it on the list. But Fusion Bolt is, of course, a 100 base electric move. And while it isn't stab, it still hits very hard. And as you guys really know, electric and ice. The bolt beam combination is one of the best combinations in the game and to be able to have filler moves besides that such as ice and ground which is also close to complete move pool this really means that you can go for four attacking move because you really need to have the stab in mind and outrage of course is the best one at that while dragon claw is an option i wouldn't consider it mainly because outrage is really just dishing out the damage at this point this is what you want Usually, however, Curem do go with a fully special move pool, and um, it isn't necessarily bad at that, mainly because for being an ice type, it's not that fragile, and since it has roots, it actually can stay active quite longer, and being able to go fully special offensive is actually fairly alright. 120 base special attack is not <laughs> bad at all, it's actually very high for Pokemon, it's just a 170 attack, it's so much more, which kind of make the towering of the attack so much better, even though it doesn't necessarily matter. And of course, as you can use item, Life Orb, of course, the C moves in mind makes the damage output that is already ridiculously high even higher. But overall, I would say that Curran Black is a very complete Pokemon, maybe a bit on the slow side, but other than that, it doesn't have that many issues. It really is one of the best Pokemons in the game. So if Curran Black represents one of the best, where do Garchomp fall? Well, regular Garchomp do fall definitely better in Curran Black. Mega Garchomp, however, not necessarily. It's definitely, is, I would say, weaker than the regular Garchomp in the aspect as to how they nerfed it, even though they made it more powerful. That said, we're going to cover first Dragon and Ground as a type of combination. It's definitely, in my opinion, better than the Ice and Dragon combination. It is offensively not as scary, however, it still is one of those things that I think works really well due to Dragon and Ice are, well, completely walled by Steel. To be able to have Ground Stab is really up there as one of the better combinations. Very few Pokemon can actually deal with this offensive type combination. And of course, defensively, I think it works better. We have Immunity and Electric, Weak to Fire, Poison and Rock. And have weak three weaknesses, Dragon, Fairy, and of course, Ice. And of course, Ice is very weak at. However, I think these combinations of weaknesses are much, much more manageable since they aren't necessarily as common. And if they are, they are very easy to scout out for. Consider, of course, the Curum Black has five to watch out for. And of course, everything kind of could hurt. Uh, stat points, though, they are very much alike. 170 in its attack and 120 in special attack. That is actually pretty much the same. When it comes to its defensive distribution, they are deviating a little bit, though I would say, all in all, Mega Garchomp is slightly bulkier than Curum Black. We have lower HP of 105, higher defense of 115, 95 in a special offense. So it's it's bulky, it definitely can take a few hits. However, the speed tier is lower of 92, and 92 is pretty darn bad. It's not extremely crippling, but consider that regular Garchomp had 102. Uh, this is something that has to be considered when using Garchomp, because this means there are a lot of threats that now outspeed you that didn't do that before your mega evolvings really have to think about when you change your form that said mega garchomp clearly has the all the distribution to be a, a very very complete wall breaker if you use like that it is ferociously dangerous and together with abilities such as sand force yeah that's kind of disappointing so that's boosting your overall moves by 30 percent in sand 
an exchange for life for, but cannot, no, I'll be completely honest with this one. It's very VGC manageable, and I definitely say that something which runs hard to get her here is very workable, but as for the singles, it's a lacklustering ability. While I would say that it's definitely something that could be used, it is definitely for a caliber the Pokemon is, it's definitely a lot weaker than life for Terra Vault. Had this Pokemon had something like Mole Breaker and become roughly the same, yeah, then we start talking, but for Sand Force, yeah, you're not going to use this Pokemon for that. i definitely tell you guys that. However, I would say Garchomp overall is a very, very dangerous Pokemon. At 170 attack that are usable, this Pokemon means that Mega Garchomp is, if not the, at least one of the strongest Pokemon in the whole game. But as you guys already know, a Pokemon is only as good as a move allows it to be. So how good is Garchomp Moopool? Well, it's pretty good. It actually is. While I think notable moves are roughly the same on Kirin Black and Garchomp, one rule has to consider this. Garchomp has a broader variety of moves. We have Crunch, Dual Chomp, Fire Fang, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, which of course is your main stab, Brick Break, Fire Blast, and really no worth noting it. Fire Blast is probably one of the best fillers for Mega Garchomp, mainly because of the Pokemon you could potentially wall it. We are talking about, of course, Ferrothorn and, of course, the Brown Song. Both of them do not like necessarily the Fire Blast. Air Lace, Shadow Claw, Dragon Tail, Stone Edge, Sword Stance, Poison Jab, Rock Slide, Surf, Iron Head, Earth Power, Aqua Tail, Dragon Pulse, Iron Tail, Outrage. Yeah, that's where it's at. Stealth Rock, Natural Gift, which I realize doesn't make any sense, Whirlpool, and Hone Claw. Reason I have Hone Claw here is for one reason. I've seen a few Sis use Hone Claw to ensure not only that Fire Blast hit, but the Stone Edge will hit. And also, of course, you can capitalize on Dual Chop, which has a bit of a shaky accuracy. So overall, Hone Claw is really good. Sword Stance is kind of overpowered, I'd say. Well, when you have 170 base attack, you don't necessarily need two stages. While they do resolve a few defensive matchups, they aren't necessarily that defensive matchup that threatens you in the first place. So Horn Claw is overall a pretty good filler. And when it comes to actually Garchomp's overarching theme, while it does lack a few like Focus Blasts and stuff like that, it still has a lot of other varieties such as Surf, Aqua Tail to fill that out. Whirlpool is one of those really cool moves to use on this Pokemon, mainly because it is defensive enough to lock Pokemon in and set up against them if we're forced to. A Whirlpool just overall really, really frustrating to be dealing with. Of course, the status set with Mega Garchomp is Outrage or Dragon Claw to get it with the likes of very quick and then Filler. Usually, Fillers are either Fire Blast or Stealth Rocks. And of course, even Rest Sleep Talk are usable for this possible Pokemon. Poison Jab do fill a void, but uh, quite frankly, Iron Tail or Iron Head are stronger for the very times you're going to be forced to deal with. But that would pretty much be the only reason, and quite frankly, Earthquake hits harder than Iron Head, so it doesn't necessarily become an interesting moving concept. But overall, I say Garchomp has a very, very strong move pool, definitely stronger than Cure and Blacks. What is holding it back is that it lacks variety and. Um, of course, it isn't as speedy as Curran Black, so when it comes to overall how these, these Pokemon would work, I definitely would say, um, be into concept that the only thing Garchomp has over Curran Black is that it has a stronger stab combination that is consistent together, of course, that Curran Black do lack offensive Ice Stab, like Ice Punch or, you know, Ice Cold Spear or anything like that to kind of void itself offensively better than Garchomp, because that's definitely something it doesn't can do with Garchomp. Clearly can and has an inch over Cure and Black. So when it comes down to these two, I definitely was looking back and forth on what I really think. On the one hand, we have Cure and Black, which of course has a better ability and possibly a better stab combination, but aren't necessarily dealing with Steel type all that well. Unfortunately, though, it does get Earth Power, which means that it has a way of actually deviate itself from that. And overall, it does kind of leave room to. Be, of course, as whether or not it can be as threatening as Mega Garchomp. Mega Garchomp, of course, has a main stab, which is something that Cure Black can't use. It has offensive problems about Outrage and Earthquake, so it can use its um, physical move pool well, clearly better than Cure Black. And uh, the only thing that's holding against that is that Cure Black can use Nighten, which Garchomp clearly cannot. So I think they're on even, even ground in the most of all of this. So. I really was starting to look upon leaks instead because I think in, in the Smuga meta, I think they do roughly the same thing just with different stats, but are roughly the same. But when it comes to league concept, however, 
I can start seeing why the other one is better than the other. Mega Garchomp is very, very one dimensional, a force upon, of course, carries sandstone to be able to dish out the real meat of the game, which is the damage. Curian Black does not rely on that, and this is one of those things that really does help Curian Black deviate itself from the other. Curian Black offensively are scarier because of broader variety and roost, which means it can fill different kind of roles, and that has to be rewarded somehow, and I think a league concept is where it's shown probably for the first time ever. It definitely just outshine Mega Garchomp in this aspect, mainly because of better speeds here and able to use an item to, of course, defensively check stuff or offensively become faster or stronger with specs and scarf, which is why the reason is that Curum Black will win this matchup. With this, of course, said, I really just want to have this kind of pointed out that Curum Black today is blacklisted from, um, well, unreused, so it's overused by default. And I think it does a fair enough job, they really do, but Mega Garchomp isn't used that much at all, and it has a lot to do with that its regular form really is, well, better functionally than uh, Cure and Black. While Stealth Rock is a thing here, it definitely goes as a better Stealth Rocker when it's speedier, which makes offensive variants of, of course, Mega Garchomp not necessarily as good due to this. Um, and that's something I kind of want to point out, I really just want to know, how good would you guys think Mega Garchomp would have been had it not had a regular form that was, well, of course, speedier than a regular form? Because I think they are on par with one another, but for different reasons. And um, going into this episode, I really was going to give Mega Garchomp the win, but looking back at it, Curum Black has a bit of variety. While the weak to rocks, uh, it still has a ruse, so it, I think it performs a wall breaker role more reliably than Mega Garchomp, and I think this is the reason I kind of eventually just said fuck it you know this is Curum black clearly is overall better here and of course it wins the match versus garchomp too and ice beam away and that's it of course being speedier you cannot resolve that issue too that said this is not what we are comparing because let's face it then nobody would win against Curum black um so with that said guys really just want to thank you for always for watching and actually join us next episode where we're gonna look upon a matchup i really think going to be interesting for the most of you so, with that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.